Solana reach $1,000? Whether you're in the yes camp or the no camp, there are compelling reasons in regard to this burning question. I'm going to share with you the good and the bad of Solana and let you decide whether Solana will catapult itself into the top position or drown in its own issues. Let's talk about the good of Solana. What are some of the things that make Solana so good and make people so bullish on Solana? Well, one of them is their innovators, right? What have they done to innovate the space? Well, they were the first to launch a Web3 native phone. You can see here the Solaga uh, review, the Solana Saga review, the Web3 smartphone has arrived. It's a capable, powerful phone with native secure wallet functionality that feels tight and intuitive. Some of the things that make it unique as compared to, let's say, an Android or an iPhone, the Saga's Web3 offering is built around the Seed Vault, a native custody solution that secures your wallet seed phrase within a secure environment on the phone. Using a wallet app like Phantom or Soulflare, you can sign Solana Network transactions with a touch of the sensor on the phone. And setting up a wallet and getting started is relatively straightforward here, thanks to a simple onboarding process. You also have other things as well that some people don't talk about. One is the amount of people that click on phishing links think they're going to, let's say, the Jupiter website or let's say an NFT Mint website. Well, within the Solana Saga phone, there's a Web3 store with dApps and some of the phones come with dApps already in them. So you don't have to worry about double checking the URL or accidentally putting in a wrong letter or clicking on a link. Those native apps live inside the phone. You can click one touch and it'll take you to the correct website. So it takes the pain of, hey, potentially getting fished, losing all your money, takes that pain away. The second thing that they were innovators of is introducing an AI plugin, being the first to introduce an AI plugin, plugin into their network. So this is from techcrunch.com. Solana launches ChatGPT plugin to help users interact with this network. The plugin, which was teased by Solana Labs in late April, will be geared toward end users initially with a focus on helping them onboard into the Web3 space. It can be used to buy and list NFTs, transfer tokens, check out transactions, interpret data, and find NFT collections by floor price. Solana is plugging ChatGPT into an RPC node that will read data from multiple sources on chain and disseminate that information to questioning users. The ChatGPT integration offers a new way for Solana users and developers to ask the AI service questions while making the experience simpler. That is one of the reasons uh, people, myself included, are so bullish on Solana is because they put the user first, which we'll go into that here in a little bit. What else are they innovating at? Well, Fire Dancer, right? The custom-built Solana validator client from Jump Crypto. What is Solana Fire Dancer and why is it a game changer of an upgrade? Fire Dancer revolutionizes Solana. It is a groundbreaking Solana upgrade, reshaping blockchain dynamics with enhanced speed and security. And Fire Dancer's redesign enhances Solana's transactions processing, potentially reaching 1 million transactions per second, outpacing competitors like Visa. Uh, if that's not innovation, I don't know what is. Now, I mentioned user-friendly, right? Talk about onboarding people. How do you onboard people, right? People stick to what they're comfortable with. They stick to what they know. And what do people know? They know convenience. They know ease of use. They know a beautiful interface. These are all things that are at the forefront of what Solana is doing. And the first one is their most popular native wallet, which is the Phantom Wallet. And I just want to share with you a video from the Phantom website or from the Phantom YouTube channel, kind of highlighting all the different features of Phantom uh, on the mobile app and on the desktop browser as well. So this kind of shows you how it was with MetaMask and how clunky it is. Um, and this is from someone who's used MetaMask, who's used Phantom. Phantom is night and day better. Uh, it's got a lot of native tools built into the app. Um, and the great thing here is as well, I remember logging onto my Phantom app one time and seeing a notification that I qualified for the Jupiter airdrop. I don't know of any other wallet, and maybe I'm uh, ignorant to the fact because I haven't used every single wallet out there, but the wallets I've used, I've never had that. I've always had to go, click a link, connect my wallet, see if I see if I can get an airdrop. But with Phantom, you, I logged in there and it said, hey, you are able to claim X amount of Jupe tokens in multiple wallets. So what does that also help? Not only with, hey, it's easier, it's less steps to go ahead and connect a wallet to a website. It's, again, 
protecting the users from clicking on fish links or clicking on something they see on Twitter. I say, hey, claim or airdrop here. You can log on directly in your Phantom Wallet and it's easier to use. Then you take a look at the leading DEX, the leading aggregator on Solana, and that is Jupiter, just so intuitive and user-friendly. We take a look at, and I just put a little bit of Solana in this wallet here. This is jupe.ag. A lot of functionality here. So the greatest benefit of this is it aggregates so you're able to dip into multiple liquidity pools across Solana without going to three different websites or having different wallets. Jupiter does all that for you. So for example, if I decide to swap Solana for let's say Bowden, okay, it was a meme coin. Let's say I wanna do 0 0.08 Solana. It tells me here, uh, two hops, and if you click on it, it tells you exactly how the transaction gets routed. You take takes your soul to Radium, from Radium to Orca, picks up the button, and it brings it back into your wallet. Once you click swap, it does all the back end for you, and you just log back into your Phantom Wallet or whichever wallet you connected, and you the token will automatically show up without the need, unlike Trust Wallet or MetaMask, of having to manually import the token. It automatically shows up in your wallet. These seem like little things, but this is all things that is important to the user. You can also place limit orders. Uh, you can also DCA. So if you want to DCA into a Solana coin, uh, let's say WIF or Jupe or into just stable coins, let's just say, right? Let's say you want to save your money in stable coins. You can do that. You can customize your frequency. You can customize how many orders and you can start your DCA. You can also bridge assets from Ethereum, from Arbitrum, Base, Polygon, BNB, Tron, Linea, and Avalanche. And you can bridge them into Solana, all from the Jupe aggregator. So users come first on the Solana network. Um, and then just to kind of prove to you even more that why they're so focused on the user, take a look at this article here. Solana network's nowhere near where we expect it to be. And this was a headline from yesterday. Okay, now Solana's network has had a lot of success. And for Austin Federa to come out and say, from a user experience perspective, the network is nowhere near where we sort of hope and expect it to be. And so their continuance of finding success for the user, making things practical and easy, breaking the barriers down and eliminating all the pain points, for them to be the leader in that and still say they have a long ways to go, uh, proves to me that their focus truly is user experience. And then also, what is some of the good of Solana? Their infrastructure. We take a look at Solana scalability and speed. Solana offers a significantly higher transaction speed compared to ETH, coming in at 2,600 per second compared to ETH mainnet at 15. If we take a look here, this is from the Solana, uh, solanabeach.io. This is in real time. You can see the transactions. It is currently processing 2,677 transactions per second with a total of over 280 billion transactions so far. Gives you the price, the total volume, 3.3 billion over the last 24 hours. And the current slot time, less than one second to uh, for a validator to successfully ingest transactions and to produce a slot. So infrastructure, it's super fast. Also, it's super cheap. We take a look at the price of Solana. Average fee per transaction is sub a tenth of a penny compared to Ethereum at $15, compared to Binance Smart Chain at a penny, Polkadot a dollar, Cardano at 25 cents, and of course Tron is free, but hey, uh, that's pretty big in Asia. So uh, also with the infrastructure, there's no need for layer twos. Everything happens on the layer one. Now, why is that important, right? The more links and cogs you have in something, the more chance of failure, right? You have more points of failure potentially in the future. Um, and so with Solana, this is from Anatoly Yakovenko. This is tweeted back on January 4th of this year. Will Solana ever require layer two solutions? There's nothing stopping developers from creating, creating layer twos on Solana. However, Solana's aim is to synchronize a global atomic state machine as fast as the laws of physics allow and the fastest way is to do everything on the main layer. And so Solana is very unique. Gets a lot of bad rap, but hey, the network goes down. Uh, it's not reliable. But everyone's got to remember, uh, everything happens on the Solana layer one. There's no layer two rollups. There's no ZK rollups. Um, unlike you have something in Ethereum. And I guarantee you, if, if Ethereum had the same amount of transactions and throughput 
on their mainnet and zero layer twos, they would have gone down as well. Now, what are some of the bad things about Solana, right? There is no blockchain or no anyone that is perfect in this world. Well, one thing is their downtime, right? Network outages. You can see here going back to January, January of 2022, we saw three, well, let's just call it an entire week where it was either a partial outage or a complete outage. Now, this is absolutely unacceptable. Now, think about if you're running a business on Solana, if you're getting ready to mint your NFT that you've been working three years to create, you build up all this hype, you spend all this marketing money, you launch your NFT, you tell your crowd, you tell your community, hey, we're ready to mint the NFT. And then all of a sudden, the network has a massive outage. That is not acceptable. Now, although it has gotten better, as you see me scroll through the year of 2022, May saw a complete outage. June saw a complete outage. September, October as well. 2023 was fairly decent uh, with the biggest outage coming in February. And 2024 was all major uh, blue skies ex with the exception of one day, February 6th, where we saw a major outage of four hours and 46 minutes. We also have network congestion so solana exec reveals actual reason behind the recent congestion if you're not familiar over 75 percent of transactions on solana just one week ago were failing again same scenario imagine you're running a business so whatever you're doing on solana imagine you have you're getting ready to be margin called on a loan on solana and you're getting ready to add a little bit more margin whether solana or add stable coins and you can't because a transaction keeps failing. Imagine you're ready for a vote. Say Jupiter's doing a vote and it's an important vote. The network is down. You can't vote either. So these are all things that are unacceptable. And these are some of the bad of Solana. Also, uh, the other negative here is the way they roll out their upgrades. You have projects like Ethereum, like Cardano that take their time, massive amounts of testing and peer review go into their upgrades before they even launch them on the mainnet. There's like a 10 step process. And that is one area where Solana is not strong. This is from their website. Following the latest release, core engineers plan to improve the process for software release rollouts by bringing in additional external developers and auditors to test and find exploits and continuing to support external core engineers. Now, a lot of people point to say, hey, this is something you should have been doing from the get go. But Solana has historically, uh, let's run fast, break things, and let's fix them as we go. Uh, and that has been to the detriment of the network. Um, but but when it is all said and done, can Solana reach $1,000? My answer to that question is yes. With Fire Dancer potentially uh, solving their infrastructure issues, everything I just went over, the amount of users Solana is onboarding, take a look at some of these stats. Over 1 million active wallets interacted with the Solana blockchain in the last 24 hour, showing a growth of over 26%, with over 200,000 new wallets created over the last two days. And also, uh, we saw back uh, in March of this year, just a month ago, Solana leapfrogged Ethereum on DEX volume. So if Fire Dancer goes off without a hitch, the network congestion, the network outage issue goes away, which we believe Fire Dancer will solve, the amount of people Solana is bringing into their own ecosystem and the crypto ecosystem as a whole should push prices up to that $1,000 mark. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section and come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.